Hi there, Taysir here. And in this video, I want to talk with you about design thinking for engineers. So if you're an engineer studying engineering or working engineering, this video is for you. First, I want to say that I love working with engineers. I started my background actually in engineering with my first degree being in mechanical engineering. And engineering is really tough. It's complex. It is hard. And I appreciate that with the engineering discipline as a whole. However, engineers have something that they are kind of lucky to have. And that is this concept of truth, this objective truth that is clearer in the engineering sense compared to some other fields. Let me tell you an example. Let's say you are a mechanical engineer working as a maintenance engineer in some field and one machine stops working and then it's your job to figure out a way to fix it. So you work on it, it's fixed, and it's done, right? You know what success is, and it's really easy, really clear. And for you, success is that machine is running again. Let's say you're writing some code. Um, let's say you're developing a calculator, right? So you write the code, and you would know for sure when you are successful is when the code actually starts running and the calculator is on. And that is really easy to understand. It's really easy to get. Success means it starts working. And that doesn't exist in other field. Engineers have an, a sense, a unique sense of objective truth that is rooted or grounded within math and physics, which is really cool. Now, let me tell you a more elaborate example, and we're gonna zoom in from, or zoom out from there towards talking about design thinking. So that's gonna be our entry. Let's say you're hired, you're an engineer, and you're being hired to work with a team and that team is working to design and produce a fitness watch for cats. And your job or your task is to have that tracker works in calculating the number of steps the cat takes throughout the day. And so you start in working and you figure it out and it's working. And that's success. Success for you is quite easy to get, is quite easy to understand. And that is that the tracker works in uh, counting the steps the cat takes throughout the day. Now going towards that success, can be really, really complicated. However, once you're there, it's quite straightforward. It's working, then you are successful in tackling that task. Now, if we go into another person on your team, let's say that industrial designer, and that industrial designer is trying to work out the shape and the ergonomics of that tracker that the cat will be wearing. Now, his truth or his reasoning of what defines success is quite different than the engineering side because now all of a sudden, there's really no objective truth based on physics other than the fact that it has to take to the cat. And in that position, that designer has to ask different type of questions like, 
will the tracker look good enough for people to be willing to purchase? Will what emotions will that tracker triggers with cat owners? How comfortable will the cat be wearing that tracker? And, you know, answering the, those questions is not straightforward, right? There's no black and white in it. All of a sudden, now you have a spectrum and everything or every decision you make will lead you somewhere in that spectrum with no real definition or with no objective math based definition of what success means. Now, if we zoom out even more from, you know, the, the jobs of the engineer and the industrial designer, we will be asking different set of questions. Those are the questions at the very beginning. And those questions will be like, what problems are we solving in with this tracker? What are we looking at right there? Are people complaining of something? What is the value that this product will be adding to the lives of the people purchasing it? And is a tracker the best way to go about this value? And in that area of questioning, Things are really just gray zones, right? Or a gray spectrum. There is no right or wrong. There's no correct or incorrect, you know, unless you're counting extreme scenarios. And everything is all of a sudden moved away from the notion of objective math and physics. And now you're more into the subjective feelings and the subjective notion of value that people have. And answering those questions and figuring out how to tackle that area is complicated in that or complicated in its involvement with humans and humans' emotions, human cultures, human lifestyles, because there, everything is subjective, right? And this area, figuring out this area properly, will eventually lead you to producing a commercially successful product that, you know, the engineer at the end of the funnel was creating. And that gray area is where design thinking excels, right? Design thinking is a perspective with focus on people. It's a broad methodology that enables us to go from observations to insights and from insights into viable innovations. And because they lead to viable innovations, design thinking became a very important field, a very important type of discipline that innovators tend to go to and capitalize on. And let me step back a little bit and define what a successful innovation even means. A successful innovation has to have three conditions. The first, it has to be desirable by the people, so desirability. The second condition, it has to be viable from the business side, so viability. And the third condition, it has to be feasible from the technical side, that is feasibility. So three conditions desirability, viability, and feasibility. And we engineers excel in the feasibility part of things. We know how to make things and make things work. And, you know, sometimes 
it doesn't matter how attractive or how good it looks. It, it doesn't matter because it works, right? And if it works, that's the end of the story. That's the objective truth we're looking at. Design thinking can be a great addition for engineers to expand more, especially on the human desirability side. And that expanding into that area can give engineers a great advantage into actually deciding the future of innovations or what innovations look like because we're already masters at building and so design thinking can give us that capability of spotting or of observing life around us and extracting insights and then from there developing innovations that we can build and because we're engineers we already have an advantage because we know how to build and so naturally a lot of our innovations end up being feasible by nature and so that's what design thinking is um, at least if you're coming from engineer that's one way to look into it if you are looking to dive deeper into design thinking we have some resources for you we actually have a course on Coursera that I personally teach that you can enroll in for free and I will link it in the description below it's a bit more generic toward what design thinking is we're also looking into developing a new program that we might be hosting specifically for engineers so that can be design thinking for engineers and that can help engineers transition into or or help engineer get equipped with the design thinking mindset to enable them to bring about great innovations to the world so if you might be interested on such a topic or such a program let us know in the comments uh, let's let us know what you'll be looking into or what you would be looking for in such a program and how can we make it better to cater for your needs and to help you excel in bringing about the next waves of great innovations. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.